I'm a Christian refugee from Angola. I'm a graphic novelist and an artist basically. And um, also a comic book artist, also a graphic journalist, whatever you want to call it. I do all sorts of art, but within the framework of we call it like a comic book style or graphic novel style. Those who are not familiar with, with graphic novels, you can you can compare it to comic books. It is essentially sequential, it's a sequential narrative. That's the, the, the real definition of graphic novels or graphic art. And uh, the way I the way I started this was by basically copying what I would see from the Western style comics like Superman, Batman, uh, I think my favorite was like Superman, like we all grew up, we knew who Superman was, we all, as kids we all wanted to be Superman, unfortunately we realized we are, we are mere mortals, we are not, <laughs> we are not bulletproof, we are not all that. So by the time I got to secondary school, I, I I had actually become very good at art, but because we were not being examined for art at primary level, no one could really tell. So the first time I did an exam, the teacher thought I had actually gone outside and someone else had done it for me. People don't look at art as a very serious profession, they, they, say they don't take it seriously. But now I think I'm, I'm, I'm making them think twice about that <laughs> because I did I, I did mass communication, but I've still ended up doing art. And you know, combining the art and the commerce it wasn't easy. It's people seeing how the money comes out because you know, as opposed to a regular job where you where you come out and you're getting the salary and you know you're. you're they are now, as three, four months, they are being promoted, or after a year you are promoted, then you move to a bigger company or you move to a bigger person. It's very different because they are more or less self-employed. Well, right now, I'm involved in something that's a combination of both journalism and uh, art. It's, uh, we call it graphic journalism. It's, uh, it's, it's a new multi... It's a new media, basically. It's, uh, we get stories, like real life stories, and we tell them in a graphic format. We combine it with photos, videos, audios, and we tell a story. It's just a narrative, like any other story. It's just that the, the essence of the graphics is the bits of the stories that can't be captured on video or or, or camera is what is told through the graphics. It's a multimedia graphic novel, it's called Graphic Memories and it focuses on the lives of six different women who were all child soldiers, <coughs> how, they were living, how they were abducted, um, their life during the capture and their life now in their communities, how they, how they have been received back into the community. We actually wanted to put it in a context direct like the person's actual story without adding in any salt or paper or anything. Just the way the way the person the way the source is giving it to us is the way we're giving it to the, to the audience. So me as the artist, I went and sat down with them and they, they vividly described whether it was a nightmare, whether it was an abduction, whether it was how they are living now, what stigma they are facing. I, I got the vivid descriptions from the actual victims themselves. So what you see there is exactly how how their lives are. And uh, I worked on that project with, uh, I can call him a partner, a friend, it's, it's, it's so many things. It's, He's a good guy generally, he has been there from the beginning, encouraging me, you know, he, he saw my first <laughs> graphic novel, which was taken as a success. it was uh, in Uganda and it was a bit rough, you know, it was black and white, eh? 
but he really liked it. There was a, there was a, there was an article about it in, a, in an online journal called Start Journal. So he read that that article and he got interested in, in my work. It was my first graphic novel, and uh, although at the time I was I was involved in other work in Mogadishu, so I would be coming in and out. So it was more or less a hobby. It wasn't a full time job like this. Something I would do in the evening or the weekends. And uh, so eventually, the, there was a competition that also opened up for comic book artists here. So I entered the competition. I ended up winning. Right? And that that one sponsored by the Ghost Centrum. They sponsored the entire event and they, 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 they sponsored that. Their prize was to have your comic book or graphic novel published. So that's how the second one came out. That, now, during that time also, I was working with Mark on a prototype for graphic memories. So when, the, when we, we applied for a few brands, the first one bounced sort of, then next time it went through. So we got the funding and we went to Guru, we camped in Guru for some time, we met these women, we talked to them for about two, three weeks we were there in Guru. So we, we I, I got a real feel, you know, you go to the actual sites where you are abducted from, you sit in the huts, you, you, you meet her relatives, you meet uh, the people she works with, she has been working with like the counselors and they explain to you this is what she has been going through and this and that and you get the real picture. Zeit Online is a big German publisher, newspaper publisher. They have an online version so they, they took it on and then you got to work with these guys and I never worked with a bunch of guys like that. that, that you know, it was, it was diff completely different from what, from how we work here. You know, I don't know how I can explain it. It was really enjoyable. I'm never, you know, you don't normally enjoy work. <laughs> but these guys kind of made it, you know, it was really nice. You know? It was a good experience and I learned so much from, from that experience. So there was also the Toronto Star, which was published. And right now we are looking at Al Jazeera. And uh, I think The Guardian, Glasgow. The Guardian in Scotland is publishing, I think, next week. Yeah, so every, they keep, he, Mark is busy out there, banging those down. While I'm here, just relax, you know, but you know, generally starting out isn't easy, like for anyone. And there's no one, this is the people I've interacted with, the other comic book artists have interacted with. Some of them have the mindset that they have to be paid for this first, you know? Like, uh, you have to, you, you, someone is going to come and pay you to do that work. Yet, you are then supposed to do that work first, then get paid. Like if you put it out in the market and you know like for me personally I, I can't speak for others but for me personally my own experience like I go out when I would go out there and I'm marketing this comic I realized I didn't budget for this you know I only budgeted as far as printing <laughs> I didn't budget for the distribution I didn't budget for the marketing I didn't budget for for sales and all this and all that you know so you find okay now I've learned this about this. So the next time I'm going out to market, I need to do this differently. So it's basically a learning process. But eventually it will grow because there are also some other people I know who are working on different projects. I haven't seen them yet out on the, on the street like me, but I know they are there, they are upcoming. But there's also that issue of, you know, getting your own money and putting it into your own projects. I think like the Katoto guys did. The one thing I like about the Katoto project is that the guy understood that concept. That there's no one going to put money in your own project for you. Like you have to do it first. So when you got so many YouTube 
likes so he got money to continue doing whatever he was doing so it's sort of like that for me because the way i met the max and these other guys that i was working with was actually i was trying to sell comics at a certain school so while i was there the art teacher is one who introduced me to the head of the german cultural society here and that one introduced me to a journalist who put a story about me on the internet and that is how the people the, the other journalists the max saw my story so if i hadn't gone out there in the first place i would know that would not have one if i was waiting for someone sitting on my skills and waiting for someone to pay me hmm? it, 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 it it would never have what and you know also people think that you know talent is just enough it's not just talent <laughs> uh, you need you need to be out there you need to be marketing your, your own things right? you have to be proactive you have to go out there and continuously continuously persist so i'm still persistent I know one day people it will become part of their daily life but, but if I don't persist people won't work. so whatever money I, I try and get and I throw it into something there so that eventually your kids will now start hounding you for for those for those comments